Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Last week on My Boat, through a series of demonstrations, we showed you all of the features and benefits and the product attributes of these great Raymarine electronics. Well, this week on My Boat, we're going to show you how all of this comes together with state-of-the-art networking. As we demonstrated last week on My Boat, the multifunction display here, the Raymarine E165, is the heart and soul of the system. No matter what you do with networking, small or extensive, all of the data does end up here at the helm in various displays. Now, the first step you can also do with it is slave to a smaller display so you can spread out your screens, but we're going to go ahead here and start building a basic network. A real simple addition to the NG network here is to put in one of the i70 displays so you can get all of the extra data on an additional screen from the various systems in the boat. And again, it's quite simple. Just plug and play with the correct length of cable. One of the first things you want to do once you have your VHF in position is add it into the network and using one of the cables and putting it into one of the connector strips to the ports so that you're sharing position data from the GPS and the MFD with the VHF for the digital selective calling features of the VHF radio. When you're working with a NEMA 2000, in this case the CTOC NG network, at the head of the network and at the end of the network, you have to have a terminator. And because we're going to start to expand and add to our network, we're going to remove the terminator here so we can plug in our first backbone cable. What we've been working with here, as you see, is the white and black cables. These are the spur cables to connect off to the various devices. Now we're gonna run a major backbone cable like we're heading for the transom of the boat. Now as you've brought your backbone cable to the transom of the vessel, here's a device you may wish to connect at this particular point or somewhere along the backbone and this is called an ITC5. Now this allows you to plug in analog wind instruments or depth sounders and transfer the data to the digital network. Now because this is the end of the line in this particular demonstration, you also have to make sure that a terminator is installed. Up to this point in the demonstration, we've been building a network here based on CTOC and Gene technology, which is the NEMA 2000 protocol or CAN bus. Now going beyond here when you start adding other things that need broadband, typically video, you're going to have to switch it up to something that works with the Ethernet protocol, and that would be Raymarine's Raynet. And the first thing we would install is the HS5 switch which is just like a switch in an ethernet network in a computer in your office or at home. A popular add-on for a lot of cruisers, of course, is radar. Now this is one system that has really benefited from ethernet and digital technology. Now this is Raymarine's Open Array HD Digital Radar. In the past, with older radar systems, it was quite a bundle of cables to control it and power it and send the signal down to its display. Now it's as simple as bringing down the Raynet cable, finding the right slots, and just plugging it into the switch. And that's connected to the network, ready to go as soon as the power is hooked up. Marine electronics and networking has certainly reached a new plateau. It's absolutely amazing the wealth of information that can be brought to a display in the helm of a modern boat. What's great about the networking systems, though, is how easy they go together and the fact that you can start with a basic system and add and grow as your needs and your budget changes.